Hey, what's up everybody? Universe. I'm so excited to talk about this topic all because this is one of my favorite topics. In this video, I'm going to share some basic information about universe. Like, does the universe have an end? What is the age of the universe? What are the theories related to origin of universe? What are the things present in the universe? Is there any way that we can compare the size of the universe with the things that we have known so far? These are the basic questions that come to my mind when I have to think about universe. This video is a simple introduction for a dozen more videos that we are going to see on our channel. If you are new here, please consider subscribing our channel. Let us learn something about the universe. Universe. As soon as I think about universe, there are three important words which strike my mind. All the things that we find around us can be put in three important words. What are those? First one, space. And the second one, time. And the most important one, third one, matter. In order to understand this better, I would like to introduce one more important term called light year. If we have to measure the size of our room, we make use of the physical quantity, length, either meter or foot. If you are mentioning the distance between a shop and our home, we make use of meter or kilometer. If you are measuring the distance between moon and earth, still we make use of kilometer. What if we have to go to other planets like Jupiter and Neptune? What if we have to measure the distance between earth and other planets like Jupiter and Neptune? or a star from our Earth, or a star in the other galaxies, will we be still able to use kilometer? Yes, of course. It will be a very big number which will be very difficult to make use in our day-to-day -day life. This will be very much useful to understand the size of the universe. What is light year? Light year is the distance traveled by light in vacuum in one complete year, which is used for measuring the distance between Earth and stars and other planets and other galaxies. In the previous video, we have very clearly seen the speed of light in vacuum, that is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second or 299,792,458 meter per second. So if you are multiplying this value, 3 into 10 to the power 8 into 60 into 60 into 24 into 365, that is going to be 9.46 into 10 to the power 12 kilometers or 9.46 into 10 to the power 15 meters per year. Light is going to travel so much of distance in one year. So with the help of this quantity, we are able to measure the distance between our Earth and other planets as well the size of the universe. Before jumping into an understanding of these three important terms, let us see the basic concepts left by our forefathers. Hundreds of years ago, Indian as well as Greek philosophers proposed a cosmological model, which is nothing but geocentric cosmological model, which states that Earth is at the center, whereas other planets and stars revolve around the Earth. Then more precise astronomical observations led Nicholas Copernicus to develop a heliocentric model, which states that Sun is at the center, whereas all the other planets in our solar system revolve it. Keeping Copernicus' heliocentric model as a base, number of other scientists proposed a number of laws which changed our history of understanding universe. Example number one, law of universal gravity proposed by Sir Isaac Newton. Example number two, laws of planetary motion by John S. Kepler. Even just before 1920, our understanding about the universe was very much limited. Why? Because scientists thought that the Milky Way galaxy contained all the stars in the universe, which is not true. Then what happened in 1920? There were two people who proposed two different theories related to origin of universe. First one, Georges Lemaitre proposed Big Bang Theory. And the second one, Sir James Jeans proposed the steady state model. And the Big Bang Theory was most accepted because of three important reasons. The first theory and proof was submitted by Georges himself in the year 1927 as Primeval Atom which is related to an expanding universe. The second one, galactic redshifts, which says galaxies are drifting apart, observed by Edwin Hubble in the year 1929. 
and the third important one CMB cosmic microwave background which was discovered in the year 1964. Now what are Big Bang and steady state model all about? Let us see what does this Big Bang theory say. According to Big Bang theory it all began a long 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 time ago that is 13.799 plus or minus 0.021 billion years ago. There was a supercharged infinitely small black hole which blew up in the space. Over this period of time approximately 13.8 billion years creating thousands of galaxies and the celestial objects that we see today. Whereas our earth is 4.543 billion years old. The main point for the acceptance of Big Bang Theory is these galaxies and the celestial objects have moved from one another. Let us see this point with the help of a real life example. Let us imagine there are two cars in a station. These two cars take two different course of direction to move. Let us say towards north and towards south. These two cars move towards two different directions and travel for one hour and reach their destinations. If we are rewinding their one hour of motion, they will be back to the same station. Likewise, thousands of galaxies are drifting away from one another, moving away from one another. If we are going back in time about 13.8 billion years, they will be concentrated at a single point, which we call it as the supercharged infinitely small black hole. This is one of the important points that supported Big Bang Theory. What about steady state model? I would like to tell you two important things about steady state model. The first point, there is no beginning and there is no end for the universe. And the second point states that universe is always expanding, maintaining the average density, creating the new number of stars and planets. Now let us see those three important words. First one, space. What is space? Space is boundless three-dimensional extent. That is, it's a three-dimensional space which has no end. Now, physicists define space with time. And the second term, time. Since we are on Earth, we define time with the help of the rotation of Earth and revolution of Earth. The basic understanding, Earth takes 24 hours for one complete rotation. In reality, the Earth takes 23 hours and 53 minutes for one complete rotation. Let us imagine we are on Jupiter. On Jupiter, one day will be just 9.9 .9 hours. Approximately, we may have 5 hours of day and 5 hours of night. Whereas 12 years on Earth will be equal to 1 year on Jupiter. Why? Because 12 years of Earth's time does Jupiter take to complete one revolution around the sun. And the third important term, matter. Here matter considered to be all the celestial objects. And what are the celestial objects? And the celestial objects are considered to be galaxies, stars, planets, natural satellites, and the gas clouds. What is a galaxy? A galaxy is a group of celestial objects which are bound by gravitational force of attraction. These celestial objects can be planets, stars, and interstellar gases, and dark matter, dark energy, etc. What is a solar system? A solar system is the gravitationally bound system of the sun and the objects that orbit it, either indirectly or directly. The celestial objects are moving at a very high velocity. For example, our solar system, the sun and eight planets, they are moving at very high velocity. The rotation speed of Earth is 460 meters per second, whereas the revolution is 30 kilometers per second. The speed of our galaxy is 1.3 million kilometers per hour. The circumference of our Earth is just 40,075 kilometers, whereas the diameter of our galaxy is 1,5700 light years. The diameter of our sun is 1.3927 million kilometers. All these numbers are confusing, I understand. So I would like to give you a comparison of our sun, how big it is with the help of our earth. If we have to fit the sun with earth, we have to draw 1.3 million earths. 
Whereas if it is Jupiter, then we have to draw 1000 Jupiters into Sun in order to make it fit. Can we measure the size of the universe? No, it's absolutely no. And why do they say it has 93 billion light years? Do we have any types in the galaxy? And how many types are there? Which is the biggest galaxy? How many number of stars or the celestial objects would be there in the galaxy? Is there a chance for another solar system in our galaxy? Will there be any Earth-like planet in that solar system? And these are the questions which we are going to answer in the upcoming videos. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If any of your friends are interested in this topic, please share the links with them. And if you want me to talk about any of the topics that you are interested in, please leave the topic in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Love you. Cheers. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.